load testing and performance testing for today. Okay, right. What is compatibility testing? Different devices, right? See, nowadays we are accessing the application using different devices available in the market. Say Amazon.com. A user want to buy a product. Some users will connect with desktop applications, access the application using desktop systems. Some people will access the application using laptop machines, MacBook, notebook, tab device, mobile device, and mobile devices with varying screen sizes. As per the screen size of the system, automatically all options to be adjusted. It's called actually responsive design. You heard about this word responsive design? No. Today, any web application must follow responsive design. What is this responsive design? Let us see. So what do you respond, what do you mean by responsive design with this diagram? What this image is explaining you? Software should work on all the devices like laptops, tabs, and as well as mobile phones. Not only just working, as per the screen size of the system, automatically the options to be adjusted. Desktop computer screen size may be 17 inches, 21 inches. Tab size will be different. Mobile screen size will be different. As per the screen size of the application, all options should be automatically visible and adjusted. See, I'm accessing some application. In this mission, This system screen size is about 86 inches. The digital board size I'm talking about. All options are properly visible here or not? This is a mobile view. You do observe here. In the desktop view, all options are appearing in the horizontal fashion. Home, all courses, new batches, placement record, student review, something like this. In the mobile view, we are not getting anything here. Automatically, the menu options are getting adjusted in a vertical fashion. These are desktop view of the application. This is the mobile view of the application. This is the tab view of the application. If you go little down, about the keywords, no more about the courses. There are two sections here. See, in the mobile view, sections are appearing one after another. Yes. Here we are getting about, in the bottom of the about we are getting no more. What about in desktop view? 
left side and right side here. As per the scheme size of the system, automatically options are getting adjusted. In the desktop view, there are three courses are appearing in one line. The mobile view, automatically courses are adjusted into the vertical fashion. So this application, desktop compatible, tab compatible, mobile compatible. I'm opening some other application here. In the desktop view, it's properly visible. See in the mobile view. This is not following responsive design. All options are not properly getting visible here. Not only this application, you see sometimes when you are trying to access some web application in the mobile, some options will not properly visible. In smartphones, just we expand like this, correct? We, we maybe some link is not properly appearing. We try to expand it and click it. It's not really good design. As per the skin size of the system, automatically all options to be adjusted. That is the requirement today because different users will use different devices to access our product. As per the screen size of the system, as per the device the user using, automatically all options to be adjusted, that is the requirement. So as a tester, we need to verify our application properly visible, properly navigatable, properly working across different devices available in the market or not. This approach is called device compatibility testing device compatibility testing our application properly visible properly navigatable properly working responding across various devices present in the market are not need to be tested it's called device compatibility testing then <clears throat> browser compatibility some users will access a web application maybe our supposing we made some online shopping website some people will access our application using Chrome browser. Some people will access our application using Firefox browser, Safari browser, Internet Explorer. Does our application supporting all of the browsers present in the market or not need to be verified? In different browsers, our application visible, working properly or not need to be verified. It comes under browser compatibility testing. Similarly, you know, there are many operating systems in the market, Windows, Mac, Linux, Ubuntu, Maverick, something like this. Our application properly installable, properly working across various operating systems present in the market are not also need to be verified. It comes under operating system compatibility testing. Together, device compatibility, browser compatibility, OS compatibility, we have to check. All it comes under compatibility testing. Understand the point, right? Note on this. <clears throat> Checking, checking, does the application supporting, does the application supporting different devices, different devices, browsers, and operating systems present in the market or not? Does the application supporting different devices, browsers, and operating systems present in the market or not is called compatibility testing. Is called compatibility testing. Does the application supporting Various devices, browsers, and operating systems present in the market are not need to be verified. It comes under compatibility testing. Clear about this. So finally, here compatibility testing includes device compatibility, browser compatibility, and OS operating system compatibility. Better you list out like this also. 
comparability testing includes, take like this better, the comparability testing includes majorly three. Device compatibility Browser compatibility and OS operating system compatibility. Device compatibility, browser compatibility and operating system compatibility. See, in some interviews the people will ask like this, what is called cross browser testing? Cross browser testing meaning browser compatibility testing other name is testing across multiple browsers in the market. The other name for browser compatibility testing is cross browser testing. The other name for OS compatibility testing is cross platform testing. You know. Windows, Mac, Linux, we generally call as platforms, Windows platform, Linux platform, Mac platform. So other name for OS compatibility testing is cross platform testing. Make a note of it. Make a small note. Browser compatibility testing, browser compatibility testing, also called a browser compatibility testing is also called cross browser testing cross browser testing OS compatibility testing is also called OS compatibility testing is also called cross platform testing OS compatibility testing is also called cross platform testing. Right. Take the next one security testing. Security testing. We know, especially for internet based application, web applications and mobile applications, the security is very critical and very, very important. Once we uploaded our application into the cloud, we cannot control the environment means worldwide people can access our product, agree? Something available in the web cloud, www.abc.com. Anybody can access it. Will you be able to control it? Anybody can access our web application from anywhere, any location. Not only Indians, other country people also can access it. If all needed security conditions are not properly built, there's a chance some people may hack the data, stole the data also, correct? Recently, we are observing in the news also, TV news also, cyber attacks, phishing. You will receive a message. Yesterday also, I received one message. 99% offer for Rado watches. If you give your details, story over. Correct? This is called generally phishing in uh, IT terminology. Okay? They are giving a message, 90% offer. You are eligible for 50 lakhs of personal loan, something like this. You will get some inf information like this. You fill the details over. Sometimes you receive emails also. You got the lottery for 3.5 C or something like that, correct? Right. So here, nowadays people are, some people are focusing in this kind of stuff also. But from our end, if all needed security conditions are correctly built in our website, we can escape from this kind of external attacks, 
in fact sometimes internal attacks also internal attacks for example <clears throat> consider a website icsibank.com is a international banking company the people from different branches will who has already accounts i'm talking about internal bank employees thousands of people working in inside icsibank.com right in sorry inside icsibank people working in different different branches supposing i am working as a clerical person if i able to access deposit related feature i am put some amount my in my account and there is some internal money transfer features also available inside the banking system they will move the fund from one branch to another branch also so as a clerical person if i have access to such feature i may move some fund from the bank account to my personal account internal attacks i'm talking about the people who already have access to the product may do some manipulations if really all security conditions are not correctly built if i am a clerical person i should have access to only limited features like when a customer coming asking a statement of account generating statement of account a customer coming asking for change of address such details only clerical person will update teller should able to access only deposit related withdrawal related loan section person should able to access only loan related features loan person should not access teller related features teller should not able to access loan relevant features like this security i mean system should be built external attacks some people will come to the website and try to hack the data so if all needed security conditions are strongly built then only we can save our application from internal and external attacks so whatever the security conditions are needed to safeguard the application from internal and external attacks all correctly properly implemented or not need to be verified before we make it live such kind of testing approach is called security testing a simple verify all required security conditions are strongly built or not need to be verified this approach is called security testing we'll discuss about what kind of basic security checks we have to perform on websites first take the definition checking checking does all required security conditions does all required security conditions all required security conditions are strongly implemented in the website or not are strongly implemented in the website or not is called security testing all needed security conditions strongly properly implemented in the product website or not need to be tested it is called security testing okay what kind of security check generally we have to perform like ui testing i have given some inputs or guidelines for doing ui testing what to be verified in the same way let us have some checklist what kind of basic checks we have to carry out on the website for doing security testing take okay. it checklist for security testing checklist for security testing checklist for security testing let us analyze what kind of basic security checks we have to carry out on nowadays websites here i open some application banking application you answer me by referring this page what kind of security conditions are expected in this page what kind of security conditions must implemented in this page
login password proper login password login password complete the statement login password what do you have to check in the login password username and password should be secured username and password checking username and password in both way negative and positive way that comes under functional we are not checking the login functionality working or not remember after completion of the functional testing only after finishing the full functional testing only we focus on non functional by the time you are doing security testing or ui testing functional testing is done first focus goes to functional testing one functional testing finished completed everything working as expected functionality then we focus on non functional requirement got it here our focus is not checking functionality working or not any required security conditions are correctly implemented or not that is the focus i think that should be captcha before successful login come again i think you know there should be a captcha before successful login captcha. from username password okay after log out the page will again come or not first of all the very basic sir after after putting the uh, uh, username password. and password there is a there is any security code which has been uh, sent to register email address or uh, all that things so after that uh, accepting this so we can log into this we will further ex extend advanced level of security that's okay the very basic sir right. easily we can able to say Sir, in customer login only, customer should be able to log in, and in bankers only, banker should be able to log in. Hmm. Right. The yes, correct. That is called authorization authentication. What you said, we'll discuss. Before that, before that, nature of any text box in any case, whatever the data you enter, will be visible. using any technology in the market if we created a text box element the data whatever you keep will be visible but here username can be visible but password should not be visible correct the end user entering their password which is visible other person can observe the password the very first basic security check here check the data entered in the secured fields What do you mean by secured fields? Password. In the other in the other page, you are trying to update the password, change the password, old password, new confirm. I mean, new password. In some other page, they say online payment functionality. The credit card CVV number enter should not be visible. In a money transfer functionality, it will ask even net banking password also. That net banking password also should not be visible. So first, what I will do. If you ask me to test, perform security testing on a website, assume that this website has about forty pages totally. Now, somewhere I list out in the entire application, what are the various secured fields available? In the login section, we have a password field. In change password section, we have old password, new password, confirm password. in a money transfer functionality there is a net banking password in a online payment functionality there is a credit card cvv number field at first i list out totally what are the various secured fields available in this entire website these ten fields say in the login section password field change password section old password new password confirm password money transfer functionality net banking password Online payment functionality, credit card, CVV number. I list out like this first. In the entire application, totally in different pages. What are the various secured fields available? First, I make a list. Then, I keep something into these fields. Whatever, I enter some data into these fields. Check the data what we have entered getting encrypted or not, invisible or not. From here, you can start. like there are many other security checks to be carried out let us talk about one by one take the first one so what is the first one i said visible not only password 
check the data entered in the secured fields. What do you mean by secured fields? Like login password, transaction password, credit card CVV number should not be visible. That we have to concentrate first. First point. Check the data entered in. Check the data entered in secured fields. The data entered in secured fields. Secured fields like the data entered in secured fields like login password, login password, transaction password, credit card CVV number, etc. Login password, transaction password, credit card CVV number, etc. are getting encrypted or not? Are getting encrypted or not? Invisible or not? So we have to key some data into this kind of secured fields and verify the data what we have entered is getting invisible or not. From here we can start. Security testing we can start from here like there are many other checks to be performed. I hope the first point is clear. Clear right? The second one. Check the browser navigation after logout. Check browser navigation after logout. Check browser navigation after logout. This is the point. Before that, it is our learning management system. I log in, actually in the system I save my password, it, as it is my personal system. I log in with my account. See after doing some transactions, after doing some transactions, I log out. I click the back button. It should go back to the previous window or not? Previous window is admin module of this learning management system. It should go or it should not go? It should not go. Right. A double correctly made it. It is asking to log in again, correct? Clearly showing a message, no. It looks you either logged out or not supposed to see that. Log in to continue. So what if we what if we press back button on that time, sir? Note on the second point. This I hope second point is understood, right? What is the second sir. point? Excuse me, sir. We have to check the browser navigation after the logout. First log in as a registered user. Do one or two transactions. Log out, click back button, it should not go. When the previous window, the previous page is a secure page, it should not go. If the previous page is a public page, not a secure page, it should go. See in Google application, when you type google.com, what is the first page you see? Search engine page. You click on mail, it will ask to log in for Gmail. When I click on images, it will show images. When I click on maps, it will show the maps. When I click on videos, it will show the videos. Now I am at videos page. 
if I click back, it should go back to the previous window or not? It should go because the previous window also anybody can see. It's a public domain. The previous page is not a secured page. Anybody can see. When the previous page is a secured page, it should not go. When the previous page is a public page, not a secured page, it should. Sorry. If the previous page is a secured page, it should not go. If the previous page is a public page, it should go. That we need to test. Hope you understand the point. So this is called checking the browser navigation after logout. Somebody posting a question. What is your question? You pressed back, back button when we are in login, sir. Pressing back button? When we are logged in, in uh, admin page. So that's the Already the login available. No, sir. Definitely should go back. Then log out, then only should not go back. Right, take the next point. Check direct URL access. Check direct URL access. Check direct URL access for secured pages. Direct URL access for secured pages. What is this? Listen. I log into admin module of this project. You know, web application, every page will have a URL, right? Shall we consider it as a performance issue? Right. Anyhow, every page will have a URL. I'm copying the URL of this page. Log out. Paste the URL. I give on the URL of admin module. When I press enter, when I click go, it should go or it should not? Not. It should not. Not, sir, not. Because the URL I have given belongs to a secured module, admin module. It is going here. It's a bug. It's a defect. In the previous application, I log in as admin, copy the URL, log out. After log out, I paste the URL and click go button. As I already session out, you are giving a URL of a secured module, it should not go, it should redirect to login. But maybe in that application, it is directly going to the admin module, which is a bug, a serious bug. I log into this application. This is the admin dashboard URL. I'm copying it. Log out. I paste the URL. Press enter. It's asking to log in again. I saw in my browser settings, I saved my password. Okay. It is not directly showing the admin dashboard that we have to check. This is the point I given, check direct URL access for secured pages. See, when I type google.com, it should display the page. When I type mail.google.com, it should display login page. When I type maps.google.com, it should display the maps page. Maps.google.com, direct URL. But this page, anybody can view. It should display. Whereas, if I copy the URL of inbox page and click go, it should not. It should redirect to login. That we have to check. 
Take the next point. Check for session expiry. Check for session expiry. Hope you understand this point. Login, don't operate the system for a while, for some time. After logging in, do not operate the system for some time. Then try to operate. You logged into the system, not use or not operate the system for some amount of time. Then when you try to operate, automatically system should, I mean, session should expire. This is also for security reason. You log into your banking account, you got a call, suddenly you went off. Maybe after 20 seconds session not getting expired automatically, there's a chance for the fraud or misusage. But the session out time may vary from project to project. And financial applications like banking product, maximum of 20 seconds. After logging in, if the user not operated the system for about 20 seconds, automatically session should expire. Whereas in IRCTC application, it is about 120 seconds. In Gmail application, it is about 180 seconds. Because in Gmail application, you don't have financial data, correct? Session out time is different. IRCTC application, session out time will be different. ICICI bank application, session out time is different. Supposing if I am one of the team member involved in doing the security testing, I ask my team lead first, sir, what is the session out time planned for our product? He said 20 seconds. Now I log in, don't operate the system for, I will not operate the system for about 20 seconds. Then I try to operate, automatically session should expire. That we need to test. That is the point I have given. Hope you understood this. And take the next point. Check the right click. Check right click. Right click. And view source code options. View source code option, right click, view source code option, or disabled or not, right click or view source code option, or disabled or not for secured pages, for secured pages. Vision. Right click option, view source code option or disabled or not for secured pages. We are at login section of a banking product. The user may perform a right click action here, like this. As the right click is allowed, any browser page, any browser, there will be an option called view page source. We are able to see the entire client side code, correct? For security purpose, this option should be disabled. Our developer not disabled in this Primus Bank project. Check in the ICSIbank.com. This is showing the page level. Still it is loading. Okay. Now we are at login section now. <clears throat> I'm doing right click action here. Application showing a message Due to some security reasons, right click is not allowed. This is expected in financial applications. Any other application, 
you feel it's a very secure feature, rightly, view source code option should not be visible. If visible, I can able to see the client side code of this, like the previous one I have shown you. That we need to test. Right click option, view source code option, are disabled or not for security pages need to be verified. Hope you understood this. Take the next one. Check for authorization. Check for authorization. See, what is this authorization? I'm authoring you to access this banking application. Admin authorize employee to access the banking product. Bank employee authorize the customer to access their banking account in the online banking account in the system. What do you mean by authorizing? Permitting, approving. How admin will authorize the users to access the product? Approve the users to access the product? In software applications. How administrator will authorize the users to access the product? That is my question. Giving a login account. By the one user ID login. Login credentials. User login. Right. Look at this one. Let's assume we are working on some ERP project. There are different departments in a manufacturing company. Purchase. Stores. Sales. Accounts, etc., etc., etc. Some employees working in purchase department, few people working in stores department, few people working in sales department, few people working in accounts department. On the top, there will be admin module also, correct? A new employee joined in purchase department, purchase accountant. He need to enter the day-to-day -day transactions in the system, correct? The purchase orders or whatever it may be. A new employee join in a purchase department. His day-to-day -day job, whatever the day-to-day -day transactions he is doing, should be entered in the computer system. What admin will do now in this scenario? Admin of the ERP system will do? Create a login account. Okay, a login account created. User ID 1, password 1, something. The details are given to this person. This is your username and password. Supposing my user registration form is like this. In admin module, I'm talking about in admin module, new user registration form is like this. The employee name for which employee you are creating this login account, username, password, confirm password, submit button. This is how our developer created the form, user registration form. Now as an administrator, I enter the employee name, Richards John something, username, Richards, password, Demo at the rate one two three. Demo at the rate one two three. I click submit button. User account created successfully. Okay, user account created successfully. Now this person will log into the system. Correct. You do observe here. As for the user registration form, what I have demonstrated. For an employee, we created a user account, username, password, confirm password. That's it. When he log in. He can able to see purchase related transaction. He will have access to store transaction. Also, he will access to sales and accounts transaction because this user belongs to this particular role mentioned anywhere. Any permissions are given? 
Only these are the permission, these are the features this user can access is configured in the user registration form. So definitely when he logging, no, definitely when he log in, he can able to see everything. Then what is the security? This is called internal attacks, I said. What is the security? He able to see everything. While creating login account, admin should able to set up the required permissions. Not just creating a login account. Creating login account, conferring the required permission. Supposing here, in the application designs, there will be some features. This user can access only this, only this, this, not this. If there is an option like this, only these are the features user can access, not remaining. Then only admin can create a account, admin can configure the required permissions, agree? Like this system designed or not need to be verified. Admin able to authorize the users to access the product or not, means admin able to create new login accounts or not, admin able to configure appropriate permissions or not, admin able to enable, disable accounts or not. The employee resign. Employee in the notice period. The purchase manager said to administrator, uh, the person should not access the application for next 10 days because he is going to leave. Now I should able to disable the account. Sometimes maybe after he rejoined, I should able to enable the account. Like that system designed or not need to be verified. It comes under authorization testing. Together, admin able to authorize the employees to access the application in the required manner or not need to be tested. It comes under authorization testing. I am authorizing the salesperson to access the sales module. I am authorizing this purchase person to access the purchase module as administrator. Whether this provision available and working properly or not need to be tested. It comes under authorization testing. Okay. She joined as a purchase department employee. I created a login account, configure the permissions given to her. The other employee joined in sales department. I created a login account, configure the permission given to him. This is your username and password. Now she will try to log in. There are many modules in the product, same ERP. What she should able to access? Only purchase related activities. When he log in, only he able to see sales related activities. That is called authentication. Authentication. Generally, what do you mean by authentication? Authenticating. Recognizing. Now these people will try to log in. Users will try to log in. Does the system able to recognize the registered users or not? Sir, I created a login account. This is your username and password given. This is your username and password given. Now these people will try to log in, right? When these people try to log in, does the system able to recognize the registered user or not? Providing the right information to the right user or not? It comes under authentication testing first of all admin have a provision to create login accounts and able to configure the required permissions or not authorization testing these people are able to log in or not and does the system providing the right information to the right user or not comes under authentication testing these two are also part of security testing because all these for security reasons so what is the previous point you have taken Check for authorization. Take another point. Check for authentication. Check for authentication. These two are frequent last entry questions. Let me give the notes in an elaborated manner. Take it separately. Authorization testing. Authorization testing. Checking. Checking, admin able to register new users, admin able to register new users and admin able to configure 
had been able to configure appropriate permissions or not had been able to configure appropriate permissions or not is called authorization testing had been able to create new accounts had been able to configure the appropriate permissions or not is called authorization testing take somebody authentication authentication testing so what comes under authentication okay had been created accounts user 1 user 2 user 3 while creating first user account i configured the permission purchase department related permission second user sales related permission third user accounting related permission now the first person able to log in or not second person able to log in or not third person able to log in or not first of all these users are able to log in or not okay able to log in now does the system providing the right information to the right user or not system recognizing the registered user and providing the showing the right information to the right users or not it comes under authentication testing take it authentication testing checking checking does the system able to does the system able to recognize does the system able to recognize registered users or not does the system able to recognize registered users or not does the system able to recognize registered users or not and providing and providing the right information to the right user or not providing the right information to the right user or not and giving the right information to the right user or not right hope the point is clear right better i'll demonstrate with a practical example same authorization and authentication and these are the frequently asked interview questions almost must ask in interview question explain what is authorization testing and authentication testing so let me give another practical scenario here this project has two modules admin module and employee module human resource management system hrms product it has two modules admin module and employee module what is human resource management system to manage the employees day to day activities yeah their attendance leave management pay slip management attendance register salary register all human resource belongs to an organization to manage the day to day activities of the hr department work can come mute yourself mute in the place network in all here i log in as administrator i log in as admin here now a new employee joined in our company say a new employee joined in organization your name i am asking arun kumar last name demo okay arun kumar anil kumar last name demo 
a new employee joined in the organization, Anil Kumar. I registered the employee details. I only created employee first name, middle name, something like this. Definitely this employee should able to log into this product to apply for a leave, to track the previous attendance history, leave history and salary history, correct? It has admin module and also employee module. Employees can log in, apply for a leave. Employees can log in, track the previous attendance history, leave history, etc. Now, I am creating a login account for this Anil Kumar employee. As an admin, I am creating a login account for the employee. There are two roles in this product. Admin role, ESS that is employee role. If it is ERP application, admin role, accounts role, sales, purchase, you will get multiple roles. Anil Kumar is an employee. I am creating a login account for the employee here. For the Anil Kumar, I am creating a login account. The username Anil123, password Anil123, shift123. Now I will give these details to the employee Anil. This is your username and password. Here, admin able to create a login account for the registered employees or not? Admin, as an admin, me, I able to create a login account for the registered employee and I configure the permission this person belongs to employee role. It is called authorization testing. Admin able to create login accounts or not? Admin able to configure the appropriate role or permissions or not? Now, this Anil Kumar employee will try to log in, correct? If Anil Kumar log in, what is to display? First of all, I created a login account. Try to understand what is authentication testing. This system, RNHRM system, able to recognize registered users or not? In admin module, I created a login account. Now this person trying to log in. The software able to recognize the registered user or not? Yes. Anil Kumar able to log in. And the software showing the right information to the right user or not? You please observe, it is employee module. You don't have admin related features here. What he can do? They can apply for the leave. They can track the previous history. It's not admin module, employee module. Admin able to create a login account for the employee. Admin configure the required permission, employee role. Now system able to recognize the registered user providing the right information to the right user. Hope you are getting the point right. Similarly, now I am an admin, super admin. Your admin account is super admin account. Next week, next one week, I am on the leave. Consider the application scenario, okay? <laughs> right. Temporarily, I want to assign one person as a sub-admin. I want to make another person as an admin, so that in place of me, he will able to administer the system. Okay? So what's your name? Again, I log in as administrator. I'm creating a new employee. This employee Shivaram, I want to make as a sub-admin, another admin. Now I'm creating a login account for Shivaram with a role as Admin role for the employee Shivaram. Username, I give him Shiva. Password, Shiva123, shift123. Three. 
I created a login account for Shivaram with admin permissions because I want to make this employee temporarily as a sub admin. Now, when the Shivaram is logging, what is the expected module to be displayed? Admin module. Admin module. Because while creating the login account, I make Shivaram as a admin, another admin. You please observe. It's admin module. Previous it is showing only few limited features because of employee applying a leave, tracking the previous history. Now I may Shivaram as a another admin when he log in, system should display admin module. So system able to authenticate, recognize Shivaram showing the appropriate content. System able to authenticate Anil and showing the appropriate features. It comes under authentication testing. Hope you understood the topic. Admin able to create login accounts or not. Admin able to manage, configure the required permissions or not. Whether this facility available in the admin module working properly or not need to be tested first. It comes under authorization testing. So that if it is really working properly, then only admin can able to authorize the employees to access this product. It comes under authorization testing. Now, these people will try to log in. Software able to recognize the registered users or not, providing the right information to the right user or not, comes under authentication testing. These two comes under security testing. For security reason only, we are doing this kind of testing activity. Got it? Right. So take the next one. Load testing. Load testing. What is load testing? What is load testing in the name itself very clear. Loading and testing is called load testing. Loading number of users to the system. Pumping number of users to the system at a given point of time. Thousand users are trying to access the login. Thousand people are trying to log in. First of all, this login working or not. If working, how much amount of time it is taking to respond? So previously, in login functionality, if I ask you to check login functionality working or not, say Facebook login working or not, Gmail login working or not, how you test? You enter one username, one valid username, a valid password and click submit button. Consider Gmail login. You enter a valid username, valid password and click submit button. What is expected? System should display inbox page. It is showing inbox page. One moment. Okay, consider the same application or Enter a valid username, a valid password. Let me go with the employee account. I entered a valid username, a valid password, and click login. It is showing employee module. Login functionality working or not? Working. In a big organization, thousands of people working in a company, all these thousands of people have access to this product. At a given point of time, say, thousand people will try to log in. At the time of doing functional testing, we have verified Functionality working or not by giving one username and one password, correct? When I give one username, one password, perfectly it is working. When I enter one username, one password, perfectly it is working, no doubt. Functionality working. But when it comes to live, thousands of people will try to log in at a given point of time, correct? If you consider Gmail login, IRCTC login, Facebook login, millions of people will try to log in in Facebook application, G Gmail application. 
thousands of people will try to log in in IRCTC application, especially during Tatkal hour, this load will be high. No guarantee our website may respond or may not respond. May work, may not work. For one user, it is working. When 1,000 users are trying to log in, 10,000 users are trying to log in, 40,000 users are trying to log in at a given point of time, no guarantee login may work or may not work. We have to test it or not. Functional testing you carried out by giving one username, one password, it is working. When I make it live, many people will try to log in at a given point of time. Okay, consider that learning management system. One video, many people trying to play at one given point of time. Agreed? We are uploading some videos, right? All these batch students will try to play. Maybe sometimes, let us say, let us say, there are 1,000 students in one batch. At one given point of time, 100 people are playing to play the video. Otherwise, consider OTT platform. One video is uploaded. One movie video is uploaded. Lacks of people trying to play the same movie at one given point of time, correct? You see, sometimes in Netflix or in these prime videos, you don't get the issue. You go to other small, small platforms, loading, 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 buffering, correct? Will not load properly. Then there is a new movie release. When many people try to play the same video at a given point of time, sometimes they will not play properly, correct? You, you never observe this? Many times we face the problem. Maybe odd hours, after four, five days, very quickly it will play. But the day one they release, slowly it will buffer because many people are trying to access. But you don't get this problem in Netflix. You don't get this problem in a very professionally managed platforms. In the local platforms, you'll get the problems, correct? Because they maintain huge infrastructure like that, Netflix people. They maintain separate servers, many infrastructure maintained. So finally, as a tester, many people try to log in, many people trying to access our product at a given point of time. Does our application functioning, responding? If responding, how much amount of time it is taking to respond to be measured? It comes under load testing. Checking, how does our application behaving? How does our application working for multiple users at a given point of time comes under load testing? Consider a login example. When 1,000 people are trying to log in, how does the login behaving? 10,000 people are trying to log in, how does the login behaving? 40,000 people are trying to log in. First of all, this login working or not? If working, how much amount of time it is taking to respond to a measure? It comes under load testing. Got it? Can we do load testing manually? Can we do load testing manually? No. No. Yes, we can do. No. Yes, we can do when the load is very limited. Maximum 40 people, 50 people, 100 people will access our product. We can do it manually because maximum infrastructure you needed that 40 missions on 40 people. Small, small human resource management system school management system can be done. Facebook application, Gmail application, you cannot do. Because millions of people will try to access at a given point of time. Manually, you cannot do it. If the number of users are very limited, 40 users, up to 100 users, manually we can do this. If the load is huge, we have to automate loading, load testing process using the tools like Loadrunner, JMeter, etc. You heard about the tool, load on a J-meter? Selenium is a functional testing tool. We can use Selenium only for automating functional testing job. Using one tool, you cannot do everything, correct? Using Google Pay, you can able to make a mail. Why? It is designed for payments, not for mailing purpose. Gmail is an app or a tool made for mailing purpose. WhatsApp is another tool made for messaging purpose. GPay is another tool made for payment purpose. Like Selenium is a tool made for functional testing purpose. Loadrunner is a tool made for automating load and 
performance testing. Jira is a tool made for managing our day-to-day -day project management related job for different purposes, different softwares in the market. Selenium is a tool specially made for only automating functional testing job. Using Selenium, you cannot do none of the non-functional testing. Understand the point? But 90% of the time we spend doing functional testing, hence we are seeing most job openings in functional testing line. UI testing and usability testing are very light activities. 90% of our time we are spending on doing functional testing. So in manual testing, in automation testing also, you see most of the job openings in functional testing line. If I'm hiring 10 people for a new project, maybe I hire one person for doing load and performance testing. Nine people I'll hire who has experience and knowledge in functional testing line. So load and J meter, less job market. And competition also less. Job market less. Competition also less. If you see 10,000 jobs in Selenium, you see only 100 jobs in load and or J meter. But you finding this 100 people also very difficult. Because mostly people are focusing only on Selenium. Maybe learning point of view also. Nobody is focusing on learning JMeter or load and because first of all, freshers, it is not eligible. No company hire a fresher on load and and JMeter because it's a very technical subject. That too, managing fake experience also not possible with load and and JMeter, frankly speaking. Selenium is manageable. Manual testing manageable. For manual testing on Selenium, freshers eligible, experienced person also eligible. For load on a J meter, only experienced people is eligible. That too, just by posting two questions, they can understand whether you are giving fake or having actual experience. Because load on our infrastructure is quite different. Selenium we install in our laptops and we can work. Load on a cannot do like that. One lakh people are trying to access the product at a given point of time. How does the system behaving? I want to test. I have to create one lakh virtual machines. In general laptop, general desktop, it will not work out. You need to maintain a dedicated IBM rack servers. The infrastructure itself is different. Load testing infrastructure is different. In no institute, you, cannot, you can see load runner infrastructure. Not possible practically because servers, routers, firewalls, there are lots of configuration will be there. Because that too, we have to pump the load from different locations, right? Reality, not from one system. Global users are accessing this product, correct? You need to pump the load from different servers. Generally in real time, one AWS service set, Singapore location, one more AWS service set, Canada location, people will take like that. They generate the load from different locations. Complete load coming to one server. Now we measure how it is functioning. Understand, it's a very technical infrastructure. For that reason, generally, mostly we focus on doing Selenium trainings. Job market is huge, learning also easy, getting a job also easy. Right, load testing. Checking, checking, does the application capable of handling, does the application capable of handling, does the application capable of handling multiple users does the application capable of handling multiple users at a given point of time or not does the application capable of handling multiple users at a given point of time or not is called load testing Sir, can you repeat once, please? Does the application capable of handling multiple users at a given point of time or not? Does the application capable of handling multiple users at a given point of time or not is called load testing. For example, 
note on this diagram. Sir, how load testing can be done manually? Manually meaning 40 minutes. Supposing I said, if you want to verify a load of 40 users, 40 computers, 40 people, all 40 people will try to log in at a given point of time. This is only the possibility in manual. But you don't get accuracy here. Because you cannot sync all 40 people actions at a given point of time, right? Yes. Small, small applications we can do. Yes. But suggested to go with simulators like Loadrunner, JMeter kind of tool. They are simulators. Take the notes about this diagram. Checking, checking, how does the login working? How does the login working? How does the login working for 1000 users? How does the login working for 1000 users? 10,000 users, 20,000 users, etc. How does the login working for 1,000 users, 10,000 users, 20,000 users, etc. is called load testing. So remember, for your understanding, I given a sample number 1,000, 10,000, 20,000. That doesn't mean for every application we go with 1,000, 10,000. That is based on your application previous business history. Google application load condition different. IRCTC application load condition will be different. Netflix load condition will be different, correct? Same load will not applicable for all the application. Your senior management will decide what is the load condition we have to apply for our current product based on the previous business history. At the same time today, you know, Google Analytics clearly will show you how many people are coming to a website in a day, where they are spending most of the time. I can able to say, when I log into my Google Analytics account, how many visitors came to our website yesterday, I can able to say. 3,000 people visited your website. This is a page where the people are spending more amount of time. Google Analytics is a tool will give you the complete history about your website. Based on the history, your management will decide, okay, 3000 people are accessing this application at a given point of time, approximately. During evening hours, 4000, early morning hours, only 1000, peak hours, evening hours, 4000 people are coming. So generally any business will have a peak hours, right? IRCTC application, during Tatkal hours, load will be high. Midnight hours, load will be less. Facebook application, midnight hours, Facebook, I mean, load will be high. Other working hours, load will be less. Any business, any application will have some peak hours. So in such time, how does the system behaving also need to be tested? For your understanding, I listed 1000, 10,000, 20,000. That doesn't mean for every application, we apply the load of 1,000, 10,000. Your, your lead will explain, we have to apply a load of 20,000. We have to apply a load of 2 lakh. Accordingly, we have to do testing. Make a small note here. This load condition, this load condition, that is 1,000 user, 10,000 user, may vary from project to project. This load condition may vary from project to project. So Gmail load condition different, IRCTC load condition different, QuitTech.com load condition will be different. Okay, continuation. If the load is very limited, if the load is very limited, say for example, 40 users, 50 users, 60 users access our product. If the load is very limited, we do load testing manually, we do load testing manually. If the load is huge, 
if the load is huge we automate load testing we automate load testing using the tools we automate load testing using the tools load runner jmeter etc we automate load testing using the tools load runner jmeter etc clear about this point right for today i stop here and tomorrow we talk about performance testing recovery testing globalization testing localization testing there are few more non functional testing type performance testing recovery testing globalization localization one this non functional testing type for done will introduce you alpha testing beta testing which are a part of user acceptance testing so that the theoretical part will be done okay right we'll continue tomorrow thank you thank you online team we'll continue tomorrow